Hello everyone, welcome to IAS Baba 60 days rapid revision series for prelims 2022. This is day 16 and we are taking up history. So before going to the topics, friends, we accept and warm heartedly welcome all your feedbacks. But one suggestion is that whenever you take up any subjective uh, questions or like any of the definition related questions. So avoid going with the hardcore legal definitions because here you will get the definition of that word only after coming out of the exam hall. So here. Say for example in that parole question, so if you take the overall meaning of that and if you attempt that, then you will get more courage inside the exam hall to crack that, else your brain goes with the fear and it doesn't make an attempt to take a smart guess. So make sure that you take the overall meaning and make sure that you gain maximum in that course even if you cheat for 20 to 30 percent. So I don't think that would be a blunder there, okay. So follow that approach and coming to the topics, these are the topics we are going to discuss. So the first is the Nai Talim of Gandhiji. So Gandhiji proposed the education system. The principal idea is to impart the education of the body, mind and soul through the handicrafts and that is taught to the children. So handicrafts and the training of body, mind and soul all were included and it was an embodiment of the ideal society consisting of small self-reliant communities. So this was again related to the self-reliance that Gandhiji propagated. Then, citizen being an industrious, self-respecting and generous individual living in a small cooperative community. So, here it is like every person should have one or the other skills. He should groom them, he should train them and he should work on it so that he will be a productive citizen. And then, Nait Alim also envisaged new teacher who establishes rapport with the thought and he becomes one with the students. Okay. And then he learns more from the students than he teaches them. And then the Gandhiji also said, he who learns nothing from his disciples is in my opinion worthless. And then a true teacher regards himself as a student of his students. Okay. So these were the ideas of the Gandhiji regarding the education. And then come to next, the literary works of important freedom fighters. So first one, the Balgangadhar Tilak. So he wrote Kesari, Maratha, and then Gita Rahasya. So we make sure that we know at least the books written by famous freedom fighters. So because they will give one or the other hints in prelims for the guest works. Then Jawaharlal Nehru, the discovery of India. Then glimpses of world history. Then Mera Kahani, Meri Kahani. Then Maulana Abul Kalam Azad. So he wrote Hal Hilal and then India wins freedom. And then Gubare Khatir. And then Lala Lajpat Rai, he wrote Unhappy India. Then Dr. Rajendra Prasad, he wrote India Divided. And then some others, Lala Hardayal, so he wrote Hints of Self-Culture. And then Surendranath Banerjee, Bengali. And then A Nation in Making. Then Veer Savarkar, War of Indian Independence. So then Ravindranath Tagore, Geetanjali. Then Home and the World. Then Gora. Then Hungry Stones. Then Chandalika. Then Visarjan. So Ravindranath Tagore, a multi-talented person. And then Madan Mohan Malavia. So he had written Abhyudai and then Hindustan and then the leader and then Gopal Krishna Gokale, the nation book, then Keshav Chandra Sen, Indian Mirror and then Vam Bodhini and then Deen Bandhu Mitra, Neil Darpan and then the Arvind Ghosh, so Karma Yogi, Yugantar, Savitri, Life Divine, SES on Gita, then Bande Mataram and then Muhammad Iqbal, so Tarane Hind, then Bange Dara, Ani Besant, Commonwealth and then New India. Then Subhash Chandra Bose, Indian Struggle. Okay, so these are some of the literary works. So as much as possible, we try uh, reading it again and again and we revise and remember. Then some of the initial endeavors of Gandhiji. So before he became a mass leader, what were his? So in South Africa, what was his endeavors? So in the moderate phase, that is from 1894 to 1906. So he relied on sending petitions and memorials to the authorities in South Africa. And he set up the Natal Indian Congress in South Africa. And he started a paper, The Indian Opinion in South Africa. Then Satyagraha against registration certificates in 1906. Okay, so here he started his protest and others, the campaign against poll tax and invalidation of Indian marriages. So his protests were against these. Then protests against Transvaal Immigration Act. Okay, so here he took up a march also. Then later Gandhiji, then Lord Hardinge, C.F. Andrews and General Smuts. So they agreed. So they came to an agreement and there they settled up the issues regarding the poll tax, then registration certificate and others. So most of the things got settled after this agreement. So Gandhiji was to some extent, he was successful in South Africa. 
and later Nelson Mandela and others they took it forward and then they liberated South Africa. Then the coming to India, so then Gandhi ji came to India in 1915 and the first uh, attempt was Champaran Satyagraha. So it was the first civil disobedience movement of Gandhi ji there. So there he was helped by Rajendra Prasad and other leaders. Then came Keda Satyagraha. So here Sardar Vallabhai Patel and others. So they worked under Gandhi ji's guidance. So here the they led the farmers in protest against the collection of taxes in the wake of the famine. And then came the Ahmedabad mill worker strikes. So this in here Gandhiji used Satyagraha and hunger strike. So this was the first hunger strike and the protest was against the withdrawal of the plague bonus. And here we can remember the Champaran was against the Teen Katya system. Okay. So these were some of the endeavors of Gandhiji. So a brief chronology and also some brief history. Then gist of non-cooperation movement. So what are the timelines of non-cooperation movement? So All India Khilafat Conference. So that was held in Delhi in November 1919. Then the Khilafat movement was launched under the leadership of Ali brothers. Then resolution was taken by the Indian National Congress at the Kolkata session. So the same resolution was ratified. Okay. So in Nagpur session in December 1920. So here we remember Kolkata and Nagpur regarding the non-cooperation movement. Then August 1, 1920 was fixed as the date for the starting of this movement. So we remember the August 1. Okay, then coming to next, the movement gave rise to several other movements in the regional India. That is the Avad Kisan movement and then Eka movement, then Mapila movement. So all these movements, they help to some extent for non-cooperation movement. Then Ahmedabad session of Congress in 1921 appointed Gandhiji as the sole authority on the issue. And then on February 1, 1922, Gandhiji threatened to launch a civil disobedience movement from Badoli if some of his demands like uh, immediate release of prisoners, political prisoners and others if they weren't met. And however, in 1922, we know that the Chauri Chaura incident occurred and then Gandhiji withdrew all his movements. And then come to next, the chronology of the civil disobedience movement. So here we start with 1928. So Kolkata Congress session 1928. So here one year ultimatum was given to the government to accept the dominion status or the civil disobedience will be launched for complete independence. So this is an initial step. So accept the dominion status, else the complete independent movement will start. Then Lahore Congress session, one of the important sessions. So here Congress adopted complete independence or Purna Swaraj as its goal. And Congress decided to launch a civil disobedience movement here. And then Dundee March. So Dundee March was taken up from March 12 to April 6, 1930. So again, Azadika Amrit Mahotsav is going on. And we will make sure that important dates of non-cooperation and the civil disobedience and Quit India movement, we will remember. So Quit India movement's date was already asked. Then it was led by Gandhiji and resulted in the spread of salt satyagraha to other parts of India. Then first round table conference. So that was held and for this, the Congress people, no one attended for that. And then Gandhi Irwin Pact that took place in 1931 and Congress agreed to attend the second roundtable conference and to withdraw civil disobedience movement. Then came Karachi session of 1931. So here the Congress endorsed the Delhi Pact between Gandhiji and Irwin. Then the second roundtable conference from September 1931 to December 1931 with the participation of Gandhiji from Indian National Congress. So Gandhiji with Dhoti and others. So he attended that summit. Okay. Then December 1931. So resumption and continuation of the civil disobedience movement. So after everything failed, Gandhiji came back and he resumed the civil disobedience movement. And April 1934, Gandhiji withdrew the movement. So after withdrawing, he goes on for Harijan movement. So he spends the rest 10 years of his life till 1940s in Harijan movement in uplifting of the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. And then the Nehru report summary. So it was in response to the Lord Birkenhead's challenge. So what was the recommendations of Nehru report? That is, India was to be given dominion status. So this was opposed by some of the extremist leaders. Then rejection of separate electorates and joint electorates with reservation of seats for Muslim minority. So separate electorate was rejected in the Nehru report. Then provinces should be given full autonomy with, with residuary powers vested with the center. So here, again, a kind of centralization was propagated. Then complete disassociation of the state from religion. So from the religion, we are going complete. So that means, so it propagated for secularism and to some extent, absolute secularism. Then it recommended for linguistic provinces. So 
the provinces should be divided on the lines of language. Then 19 fundamental rights were uh, propounded by Nehru report and that included equal rights for women and right to form unions and right to expression, then universal adult suffrage and others. And it recommended for a responsible government at the center as well as in the province. So, so responsible government means a parliamentary type of government where the council of ministers are responsible to Lok Sabha. Then full protection to the culture and religious interests of Muslims. So that has to be given for maintaining the fraternity and common brotherhood. Then universal adult franchise for those who attend the age of 21. So this propounded for the universal adult franchise. Then creation of new province of sins. Then it decided to make the Northwest Frontier Province, a governor province. Okay. So, for having more control and to safeguard the boundaries, so this decision might have been taken. And then coming to next, the Congress sessions from 1915 to 1930. So, in the last class, we have studied almost around 1925. We continue further. So, in 1924, the Belgam session, so Mahatma Gandhiji headed it. So, this was the only session presided over by Mahatma Gandhiji. So, we mark this. Then in 1925, Kanpur session, so it was headed by Sarojini Naidu, so the first Indian woman president. So we will mark this as important again. Then in 1927 Madras session, the MA Ansari, so he headed it. And here they passed a resolution against the use of Indian troops in China, Iran and Mesopotamia. So no Indian goods will go to other nations. Then they passed a resolution against the boycott of Simon Commission. So by that time Simon Commission was there. Then adoption of resolution on Purna Suraj. So again, Purna Suraj resolution came in. Then in 1928, the Calcutta session, Motilal Nehru. So he added. So here, the formation of All India Youth Congress. So that took place. Then in 1929, Lahore session, Jawaharlal Nehru he passed the resolution on Purna Suraj. And then civil disobedience movement for complete independence to be launched. And 26th January to be observed as the Independence Day. Okay. So all these. So this was one of the important sessions in the Indian history. And then the Karachi session. So here Vallabhai Patel, he headed that. So here resolutions on fundamental rights and the national economic program was made. So again, this becomes important for this word, the fundamental rights. Then the session also endorsed the Gandhi Irwin Pact. Then in 1934, so in Bombay session, Rajendra Prasad. So he headed. So here amendment in the constitution of the Congress were made. So some important ideological amendments were made. Then in 1936 Lucknow session, Jawaharlal Nehru, he headed. So here the session pushed towards socialist ideas of Jawaharlal Nehru. So Nehru, we know that he was having a great enchantment for socialism. And then in 1937, Faizpur session. So again, Jawaharlal Nehru, he headed it. So this was first session to be held in a village. So we mark this as important because as per Gandhiji, India lives in villages. Then 1938 Haripura session, Subhash Chandra Bose. So, the National Planning Committee, so that was set up under the Jawaharlal Nehru as the president. So, here remember, for the Congress, Subhash Chandra Bose was the president and for Planning Committee, Nehru became the president. Then in Tripuri session, so Rajendra Prasad, so here we know that Subhash Chandra Bose, so he had to resign and Rajendra Prasad, so he takes up the presidentship. And then, come to next 1940s, in Ramgarh session, so Abdul Kalam Azad, so he headed that so civil disobedience movement to be launched at appropriate time and circumstances so this was the quit india movement we can say so here that do or die so all those things will come here then the 1946 mirat session so jb kruplani so the last session before independence and jb kruplani was the president of anc at independence so we mark this as the important one and then from 1940 to 46 as most people were arrested under quit india movement so not no sessions were held in that period and then in 1948 after independence so patabi sitaramaiah so he was the president and it, this was the first session after independence then in 1950 nasik session so purushottam das tandon so he was and then the nehru so he became the president later so here it is like from then after so it is like it became a political party so from then on so we can stop keeping a track of the indian national congress summits and then the philosophy is like Satyagraha, Gram Swaraj and Swadeshi. Friends, here also UPSC asks again and again on the basis of ideology. So what the Satyagraha actually meant? So it was like earlier before Gandhiji and others came into the freedom struggle. So people thought that the British rule or any rule for that matter, that was the reality. Okay, So they are born to live as slaves. So that is the reality that was given by God. But 
Gandhiji propounded that that is not Satya, that is not the truth. So truth is like whenever we live an independent life. So whenever we live the life of freedom, so that is the truth. And towards that truth, so we have to struggle. So the struggle towards that truth of freedom is Satyagraha. So that was the main intent behind this Satyagraha. And along with that, so other philosophies get added that we have to say always truth. We have to live a truthful life. So others come as a personal perspective of this ideology. And then we have the Gram Suraj and we know that Gandhiji always, he supported Gram Suraj because most of the villages at that time, they were self-reliant. So here, every person will be a producer. So every person will add some or the other to the economy of that village. So Gandhiji wanted such a kind. But however, so Gram Suraj, it didn't propagate the technology, capitalists, industries, so all other things. So that is why Nehru, he didn't uh, opt for the Gram Suraj as the form of government later and later we added the socialist come capitalist government so that was a different thing so gram swaraj that it basically made sure that the pristine culture the pristine innocence of every people of india that will be safeguarded only if india becomes a gram swaraj so that was the dream of gandhiji and then swadeshi so here swadeshi means again it is like so indigenous production of goods and services so here we can link it to atmanirbhar bharat also Okay, so that is why whenever the Swadeshi movement comes, it is like indigenous education, indigenous companies and then indigenous clothes, indigenous weaving. So all these they come under this Swadeshi movement. So when we are producing and when we are consuming whatever we have produced, so that becomes the essence of Swadeshi movement. So such philosophies, they are being coming. So we make sure that we will not make any mistakes in these. Then come to next, the Crips mission. The purpose of the Crips mission was to seek support for the Second World War. So by that time, Second World War had started and British wanted to ask the support of Indians for the same. And it provided for establishment of the Indian Union. Okay, So one union, then India will no longer be obligated to answer to anyone regarding her relations with the Commonwealth. So now India was about to become a sovereign as per the Crips mission. And then India was allowed to participate in various international bodies and the United Nations. Then it provided for establishment of a constituent assembly. Then in the constituent assembly, half of the members would be elected by the provincial assemblies and half would be nominated by the prince. So it was a half elected and half nominated body which was proposed. Then during the interim period, the Indians were promised a greater share in the administrative decisions. So by the time they give independence, so we will devol devolve most of the administrative subjects to you and most of the administrative powers will be handed over and then complete independence would be handed over. So here again, the Crips mission was opposed and so much of hue and cry occurred. And then come to next, the Wavell plan. So Wavell plan was first presented at the Simla conference in 1945 and it was named after the Viceroy of India, Lord Wavell. So the Viceroy's executive council was to have all Indian members except the Viceroy himself and the Commander-in-Chief. So in the Viceroy's executive council, except Viceroy and a commander who were to be British, so all would have been Indians. So if the Wavell plan had realized, then the council was to have a balanced representation of all Indian communities and Muslims were given 6 out of 14 seats. Okay. So the reservation were allotted for Muslim community. And then the Viceroy or the Governor General would use his veto powers very sparingly. So from now on, whatever decision the Viceroy takes, so that will be taken as per the aid and advice of the Governing Council and veto power will be used as less as possible. And then coming forward, so the Foreign Affairs Portfolio would be transferred from the Governor General to the Indian member. So external affairs will now on be looked after by an Indian member. Then the defense would be handled by a British general until the full transfer of power was made because now they wanted Indian soldiers. And then at a conference would be convened by the Viceroy to get a list of all the members recommended to the council from all parties concerned. So here one consensus list would have been formed. If that was not agreed upon, a separate list of all communities will be formed. So they wanted a proportional representation here and then if the plan worked so similar councils would be formed in all the provinces comprising of the local leaders so here wavel plan it supported for a ruling body which consisted of the proportionally represented representatives okay anyhow all these they didn't uh, come into reality then come to next cabinet mission so some of the recommendations of 
cabinet mission that is the unity of india had to be retained okay so india as a union so that will be retained no balkanization then it proposed a very loose union of all the indian territories under a central government then center would control merely defense foreign affairs and communications so apart from that all other portfolios would be vested with the states then the union would have powers necessary to raise the finances to manage these subjects so these subject means these three subjects then all subjects other than the union subjects and residuary powers would vest in the provinces of british india so here even the residuary powers so that would rest under the british india so again it is like the centralization because the residuary powers even today it rests with the central government only then come to next the princely legislatures would then elect a constituent assembly or a constitution making body with each provinces being allotted a specified number of seats proportionate to its population so here now the election will happen for the constituent assembly then the proposed constituent assembly was to consist of 292 members from british india and 93 members from indian princely states then the mission proposed an immediate formation of interim government at the center enjoying the support of major political parties and with india indians holding all the portfolios so we know that the interim government was also formed under the leadership of jawaharlal nehru so all these are the history now then subhash chandra bose so subhash chandra bose was born in 1897 in katak in bengal province and his jayanti is celebrated as parakram divas so in on 23rd january so we celebrate his birthday with great pomp and grandeur and then in 1919 he had cleared the indian civil service examination but however he resigned it to enter into the freedom struggle then his political mentor was chitranjan das and he was inspired by vivekananda and other principles and the ideologies then he worked as the editor of das newspaper that is chitranjan das newspaper that is forward and later he started his own newspaper that is swaraj so remember the newspaper of subhash chandra bose then he stood for unqualified swaraj that is independence and opposed the motilal nehru report which spoke for a mere dominion status then bose won the congress presidential election at haripura session in 1938 and again in 1939 tripuri session he won the presidential elections against gandhi's candidate patabi sitramayya so even if gandhi ji recommended patabi sitramayya but the congress voted for subhash chandra bose but however he resigned from there and he found the forward block and then he goes to germany then he meets hitler there and then comes back to japan and then he reaches japanese controlled singapore okay so from germany he comes to singapore and here he issues a famous call that is delhi chalo and then he announced the formation of azad hind government and the indian national army on 21st october 1943 and then later when the indian national army so that invades india from the eastern side so after some time there will be some issues in the army so shortage of the commodities then the weapons and others so in that context when the subhash chandra bose will be flying back so in the plane crash so he dies near taiwan so by this subhash chandra bose life comes to a tragic end then come to next dr rajendra prasad so he joined indian national congress in 1911 and later got elected to the all india congress committee and he was highly impressed by mahatma gandhi ji and he supported gandhi ji during satyagraha movement against indo pak planters in champaran so we discussed this in the earlier slides also then he led the non cooperation movement in bihar and he also started the national college in patna so we mark this as an important one then dr prasad was elected as the president of bombay session of the indian national congress in 1934 so mark this and he was elected twice again so he was also elected as the president of inc in 1939 and 1947 so he became the president three times then he wrote for searchlight in english so searchlight was a magazine and he wrote it wrote for that and he founded hindi weekly that is desh so desh was the hindi weekly started by rajendra prasad then he served as the first president of india from 1952 then he was reelected for two consecutive terms in 1952 and 1957 and is the only president to be elected twice okay so these are some of the facts regarding rajendra prasad then coming to next arvind ghosh so arvind ghosh was born in kolkata in 1872 and arvind ghosh was a revolutionary leader during the indian national movement and he passed the indian civil service examination securing 11th rank and he was much influenced 
by the American Revolution, then revolts in Italy and the medieval French revolts against England. And he attended Congress sessions and helped establish Anushilan Samiti of Calcutta in 1902. And then in 1905, Aurobindo started an English newspaper called Bande Matram. And later, Aurobindo was arrested in connection with Alipur conspiracy case and inside the prison after the arrest. So, he gets converted into the spirituality. He espouses so spirituality and self-realization. And then, British try to arrest him for sedition of his writings. But he continues to write for the nation and the British, they try to arrest him. But he escapes to Pondicherry, so currently Puducherry. And then, he attracted many followers and this led to the foundation of the Sri Aurobindo Ashram in 1926 and his greatest literary achievement was Savitri. So that was an epic poem which was about 24,000 lines. And then some of the other literary works of Aurobindo Ghosh are Basis of Yoga, Bhagavad Gita and its message, then the future evolution of man, then rebirth and karma, then lastly Savitri, a legend and a symbol and the honor of the hover of God. Okay. So, these are some of the achievements and some of the life incidents of Aurobindo Ghosh. Then, coming to the last part, friends, see, we have seen many lives of the freedom fighters. So, they have passed the civil service exam, they have left and they have entered the independence struggle. So, that means they got that awakening, they got that enlightenment only after gaining that knowledge. So, make sure that you study the civil service for the gaining of knowledge. Okay. So, once you gain the knowledge, so you will have many opportunities to grow in your life. So, IAS will be one of the doors for you. Right now, it might be the only one door, but once you gain the knowledge, so it becomes one of the doors because many others doors will open wherein you can have best opportunities to serve the people of India and best opportunities to build the nation. So, study happily, study for the sake of knowledge and gain as many knowledge as possible. So, do it all the very best. Good luck, friends.